MCAT 2017 CRAM Biochemical and Biological Foundations of Living Systems Passage 11 The Role of Glycolysis and the Pentose Phosphate Pathway in Fatty Acid Synthesis As you view the reading of the passage, you'll notice some highlighted snippets of text. What I want you to do is garner meaning from these specific selections in order to answer the questions that follow. The passage is extremely manageable, so read carefully and efficiently in order to answer the questions. Alright, so good luck and happy reading. Paragraph 1 The glycolytic pathway is usually presented in the context of explaining how cells oxidize glucose to create usable energy in the form of ATP. Here ATP is being used, but down here it's being generated, okay? And then pyruvate is made. Note that this entire process is taking place inside the cytosol of the cell. In this respect, the function of glycolysis is to convert glucose ultimately into pyruvate. This is the end of glycolysis, which is then transported to the mitochondria and converted to acetyl-CoA, which feeds into the citric acid cycle, as shown here. However, acetyl-CoA created from pyruvate inside the mitochondria can be converted into citrate molecules and then shuttled back to the cytosol and reconverted again to um, acetyl-CoA, okay? where they can be used uh, to synthesize fatty acids such as palmitate. Figure 1. Palmitate C16, H3208O2. And here um, we see it's like a carboxylic acid. Reaction 1. The synthesis of palmitate occurs in the cytosol according to the two-part reaction formula. So you take 7 acetyl-CoA plus 7 carbon dioxide plus 7 ATP, well, 777 perfection cubed, and then you're going to yield 7 malonyl-CoA plus 7 ADP, that's adenosine diphosphate, plus seven um, phosphates, okay? Next, you take these seven mal malonyl coas that you yielded, you add one acyl to coa and um, 14, reducing, I guess, NADPH, plus 14 hydrogen ions, so this is like in acidic conditions, and then you're going to yield palmitate, which is our um, fatty acid, plus seven carbon dioxide, plus eight CoAs, plus seven NADP pluses, this is the oxidized form, and six uh, waters, okay? Reaction two. Before we get into reaction two, I want you to note that the conversion of acyl to CoA to malonyl CoA just shown in reaction one, is catalyzed by the enzyme acetyl-CoA carboxylase, okay? Now on to the next one. The conversion of citrate to acetyl-CoA in the cytosol, so this is citrate coming out of the T TCA cycle, the tricarboxylic acid cycle in the mitochondria. Now you're like reconverting it back to its um, previous state in the cytosol. I'm not sure why this is, the body decides to do it this way. I don't know. God made it that way. So um, it's catalyzed by the enzyme citrate lyase according to the following reaction formula. Citrate plus ATP plus CoA plus H2O is going to yield oxaloacetate plus acetyl-CoA plus ADP and a phosphate group, okay? 
paragraph two. Both citrate lyase and acetyl-CoA carboxylase, which acts somewhere over here, are subject to multiple types of enzymatic regulation. For instance, acetyl-CoA carboxylase is activated by citrate. This type of enzymatic regulation is commonly called a feed-forward loop. What organelle produces citrate? Okay, so the answer is definitely in the passage. Hopefully you recall. Is it A, the mitochondria? B, the Golgi apparatus? C, the endoplasmic reticulum? Or D, the ribosome? I'll give you a moment to think. Definitely press pause and open up a second window if you need to view the reading of the passage again to find the text support to select the correct answer choice. Okay, so the Golgi apparatus and the endoplasmic reticulum are mainly the sites of protein synthesis and trafficking, all right? With many other secondary functions that are unrelated to catabotic, catabolic metabolism. When I say catabolic, I mean the breaking down of molecules, all right? Ribosomes are RNA protein complexes that basically synthesize polypeptides from messenger RNA transcripts. The citric acid cycle, though, it occurs in the mitochondria, ding, ding, ding. So basically citrate is produced in the mitochondrion. Okay. And this was mentioned in the passage. All right. Fatty acid synthesis and the citric acid cycle both use acetyl-CoA as an initial substrate. Which of the following describes a fundamental difference between these two biochemical pathways? Is it A, fatty acid synthesis occurs in the endoplasmic reticulum, whereas the citric acid cycle occurs in the mitochondrial matrix? Is it B, fatty acid synthesis is an oxidative process, whereas the citric acid cycle is reductive? Or is it C, fatty acid synthesis is a reductive process, whereas the citric acid cycle is oxidative? I'll give you a moment to look at the uh, reactions and then come up with an answer. All right. Okay, so let's break this down. Um, let's see. Fatty acid synthesis, it occurs in the cytoplasm, not the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, okay. And the citric acid cycle does occur in the mitochondrial matrix. So only half of this question of oh, this answer choice is correct. And even though it's correct, half of it, that may not even be the fundamental difference between these two biochemical pathways, okay? The citric acid cycle is a metabolic process whereby pyruvate is oxidized, all right? So fatty acid synthesis basically uses NADPH to reduce um, malonyl-CoA as well as acetyl-CoA, excuse me. <laughs> so basically, um, fatty acid synthesis is a reductive process 
and the citric acid cycle is an oxidative process, okay? All right. How many molecules of glucose are needed to produce one molecule of palmitate, this fatty acid, assuming that all of the carbons in each of the acetyl-CoA um, used in the formation of palmitate, okay, originate from glucose via this glycolytic pathway? Is it A, 1, B, 2, C, 3, or D, 4? So in order to answer this question, you may need standalone knowledge um, of the glycolytic pathway as well as the citric acid cycle. Or if you know how to read the reactions correctly, you don't. So the reaction one and two, that is, in, in the passage. All right, that's too much explaining. <laughs> I'll give you a moment to think. Okay, so if you're not familiar with the mechanism of glycolysis, just bear with me on this one. Glycolysis begins with one molecule of glucose. See, we have um, six carbons pictured as these bluish purple uh, circles. And ultimately, it produces two pyruvates, which is a three carbon um, molecule. Only one is pictured here, okay? So you have production of, just picture this part times two, okay? So you have um, two pyruvate, a net of two ATP because two ATP are used here, two are generated here, so this is a net of zero. But after this dashed line, if you were to add another line of this, because remember, I told you to multiply everything times two, times two, you would get a net production of two ATP, as well as um, two NADH. See, NAD plus is reduced, and again, imagine a second line drawn, then you would have another NADH. So one molecule of pyruvate is then converted to one molecule of acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is basically a two-carbon substance. All right, so from one glucose you get two acetyl-CoAs, which is a four-carbon substance. So ultimately, palmitate, we're told, has 16 carbons. So you would need four times four, four squared, thus you would need four glucose molecules to produce one molecule of palmitate or fat, okay? All right. Given its metabolic role, which of the following molecules is the least likely to inhibit the activity of acetyl-CoA carboxylase? And when I say its metabolic role, I mean the role it plays in um, palmitate or fatty acid synthesis, specifically, combining bicarbonate to an acetyl-CoA to yield malonyl-CoA. So is it going to be A, insulin, B, palmitate, C, ADP, or D, malonyl-CoA? You decide. I'll give you a moment to think. All right, okay, so in order to solve this problem, you have to understand that the products, whether direct or downstream of an enzyme catalyzed reaction, um, they often inhibit the catalytic, the catal not catalytic, catalytic ability of the enzyme, okay? So insulin, which is pictured here, 
aside from its role in regulating glucose uptake by cells, usually up, um, regulates anabolic processes. And when I say anabolic, I mean the making of molecules or the building up of molecules such as um, fat or glycogen, okay? So basically the formation of fatty acids where acyl-CoA carboxylase plays a role is an anabolic process. And insulin is least likely to um, be an inhibitor of acetyl-CoA carboxylase, okay? So yeah, because if it's going to upregulate the process, it's definitely not inhibiting, it's enhancing rather. All right, okay. In addition to glycolysis, the pentose phosphate pathway is also important for fatty acid synthesis, like um, palmitate. Why? A, it consumes the hydrogen produced um, during fatty acid synthesis. B, it produces the NADPH used during fatty acid synthesis. C, it consumes carbon dioxide produced during fatty acid synthesis. Or D, it produces the ATP used during fatty acid synthesis. I'll give you a moment to think. I know this is really tiny. So sorry. Okay, so the pentose phosphate pathway uses the glucose 6-phosphate to generate ribulose 5-phosphate and NADPH, okay? Fatty acid synthesis is basically a reductive process that requires the use of NADPH, although it might not be so clear to you here. So uh, the pentose phosphate pathway produces the NADPH used during fatty acid synthesis. All right, okay.